It is a chilling report if you or someone you know has a medical implant or device. According to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, thousands are suffering and dying every year because of faulty medical devices, and Europe is at the epicenter of that scandal. Last year in the UK, more than 19,000 adverse incidents were reported. In France, just over 18,000. And Germany had about 14,000 adverse incident reports. But the report warns that those numbers could actually be much higher, citing lack of available data. Now, as for who is affected, the report names pacemakers, rods to correct spinal problems, prosthetic knee and hip joints, and thousands of other devices. It blames lax European regulation, saying in many cases implants were improperly tested or certified by private companies. And it says that a, quote, storm of lobbying has led to the watering down of EU law. All right, this investigation was inspired by Dutch investigative journalist Yet Schouten, who led a sting operation and convinced private companies responsible for assessing devices that mesh netting from a bag of mandarin oranges was surgical mesh. Uh, joining us now from Amsterdam, Yet, uh, good to see you there. So can you tell us, I mean, this investigation that you did, it was a tip of the iceberg. Can you tell us about that and how big the iceberg really is? Yes, hi, nice to be here. Um, yes, well, in 2015, we wanted to test the system in Europe because we heard there were lots of problems with these so-called private bodies, these notified bodies, because in Europe, we have a system where if you want to approve a medical device, you go to a commercial private notified body and you basically pay this body to get a stamp, the CE mark. And if you have it, you can go all uh, on the EU market to sell your product as a manufacturer. So we wanted to test the system and we thought in order to test the system, we have to make our product, our implant really ridiculous to see how the scrutiny is of these private bodies. So we went to the supermarket, we bought a bag of mandarins, we discarded the mandarins and we told the notified bodies, would you approve this. And of course, we had a technical file where we wrote all uh, specifications and we said basically it was a vaginal mesh. And um, well, these notified bodies, they asked us some questions about the product, but they didn't ask us any questions like about safety of the product or about the fact that at the time in 2015, this vaginal mesh was already widely known to be scarring, uh, scarring and harming women on a global base. So um, basically they said, well, we, we don't really see any harm in approving this product. So this was a shock for us we went uh undercover and uh, they and told this us was just basically, the beginning we, yeah this it's was just the beginning. the beginning yeah so after this report um you know i was contacted by journalists from other countries but also by lawyers and also by patients from all around the world asking me hey what you say there about the vaginal mesh that's happening in our country too can we have um can we have your documents can and we yet, can we work together is the eu to blame in this well, the thing is, everybody thinks that in, in the EU there is a very sound regulation. And in fact, there is not. Because the system to approve a medical device, it's a commercial business-to-business -business system. So as a manufacturer, you go to this a private organization called the Notify Body and you, you get the CE mark and all on the EU you can sell your product. So it's very strange that if you compare it to, for example, the United States where you have one organization, the FDA, approving a product here in Europe, we don't. Okay. And that means that we lack the oversight, the central oversight on what is happening on the EU market. I think that is the, the, the crux of the, the problem indeed. Thank you very much for that Dutch investigative journalist Yet Schouten talking to us there from Amsterdam. And joining us now to take a closer look at the political implications of the scandal, we have Biljana Borzan, a Croatian MEP with the SND Group. Biljana is a member of the Public Health Committee and has followed this issue very closely. And still with me is Pauline Bok and Darmendra Kanani. All right, uh, let's start with you, Biljana. What, how, I mean, what is the role of the EU here? We just heard from the journalist said that there is no centralized system. Why not? Well, I have to say that we changed this legislation uh, in the parliament, uh, but the, in the first reading, uh, my political group, Socialists and Democrats, uh, uh, wanted this centralized agency uh, or to have the system more similar to American system. 
but unfortunately, it means a centralized system, and then we will have a full control of everything that's going on on the European level. Mm. And uh, maybe we can avoid uh, many, many situations or adverse effects that, that happened. But unfortunately, we didn't get enough support from the other political groups and uh, I think that there was lots of lobbying and unfortunately uh, the, 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 our uh, proposal is not uh, as tight as we wanted. I mean, this is a point I wanted to bring up, the, the lobbying, because I was reading through one of the parliament documents. It says here that some substances are carcinogenic, mutagenic or toxic for reproduction, but it says here that a full ban was unacceptable to both the council and commission due to the potential impact on industry. Exactly. I mean, this, this strikes is... at the heart of the issue in terms of the balance between vested interests or industry, if you want to call it that, versus consumers and citizens. And it's quite striking, I think, in a year before elections, that the European body politic is not thinking hard about how do you create trust amongst citizens. This is an example of where you actually remove trust because those who are elected, appointed through taxpayers' money to make sure you are safe and secure are squandering or really not upholding their responsibilities. The other issue, I think, is that actually this is a gender issue. If you think about the low-level transplants and the devices, vaginal mesh, uh, breast implants, etc., are the key, more voluminous issues that are there. Would it be different if it was actually to do with men, I wonder, mm. in terms of the industry? I mean, but, but the numbers are staggering. Is this, is this one of those, uh, those, uh, those issues where we call government interference and more government regulation is probably a bit more welcome? Well, um, it would be welcome to have any kind of data, really, because right. at least, uh, at least mm. in France, uh, the, the Le Monde investigation, because mm. each... Each country had journalists who then did their own investigation mm. and tried to get as much data as possible. Uh, Le Monde couldn't get any data, almost. It took them a month mm. and several organizations that they, they, they had to ask several times for the most basic amount of data. And when they finally got some documents, most of, it, most of them were blank. So it's not, it's not just about regulation. It's also about trying to get people to actually fill the, the, the data and to actually centralize everything as you were saying because so where for so, now there's nothing so where can the pressure come from that can instigate change well of That's course uh, from the industry it's uh, that they are the most important uh, uh, who are interested n not to have such a tight tight legislation i have to say that uh, uh, those who didn't want uh, our centralized system, they said that it, uh, that system is uh, pretty slow and that patients need uh, much, much uh, uh, faster legislation and much faster uh, uh, medical devices on the market. And I agree that uh, sometimes in uh, some medical uh, situations you need a very... Uh, your For innovation, to encourage yeah, innovation. everything, but... Yep. but uh, as a medical doctor, I think that quality of medical device is much more important than uh, if you want it very fast on the market. There shouldn't be a trade-off between speed and health. They should be entwined and actually you can, you can take a more proportionate approach. There are devices which are needed in the market which you can create a process around. There are those which are the humdrum stuff that people need all the time which have a different approach. But this report reveals, which is great, power to the elbow of journalists actually, yeah. to actually raise the issue and say actually some of these devices aren't tested So will it not humans. hurt industry? Sorry? Will it not hurt industry? I don't think so, okay. not at all. This is actually a question of actually how industry is hurting its own market. Because through these kind of exposés, you get an awareness, and I hope you maintain that awareness, actually something needs to give. And what needs to give is governance. Mm. Your, you and your political uh, parties and peers really need to ratchet up the need for a better governance arrangement in Europe that instills trust and pro proper oversight. Otherwise, we'll have a similar situation to what we had with the banks, mm. and the oversight of banks that led to the financial crisis. We'll have I a similar situation here if we don't get the governance. As, as what you were saying, what was shocking about this report also is that the fact that the medical devices were tested not on there were some on, not on humans on animals and on corpses even exactly. according to the report